cancer survivor. Two words which barely ever went together just 60 years ago, but which are increasingly becoming a key part of identity for more people than ever before. That's 15 million people in the United States alone, one in 20 of the population, and these people that you see behind me today. I am 30 years old, and for three quarters of my life, I have been a cancer survivor. At the time I was diagnosed with childhood leukemia, I had around about a 65% chance of survival. Today, a child diagnosed with leukemia in a developed country will have about a 90% chance. So we really are making huge strides in treating some cancers, with, of course, a lot of work to be done in many others. But people like me actually continue to break new ground just by reaching successive birthdays. But what happens to people like me after we largely stop taking medications, our hospital visits become less frequent or even stop altogether, and we start to allow ourselves to think of the future, not just, will I get through this? Now, I am very lucky to be able to do my job as a research scientist in Toronto and Canada, run the occasional marathon, and be here speaking to you today. But the reality is that by the time a child who has survived cancer reaches the age of 45, they have around a 9 out of 10 chance of having a serious health condition. When I was on treatment, I had a very bad side effect called stroke-like syndrome. I had been in the hospital having chemotherapy. Two days later, I woke up at home paralyzed down my left-hand side. Last year, I completed a research project to try and find out why this was and discovered new information which hopefully will mean that children like me don't have to go through that in the future. But this is just one side effect. I am one scientist, one drug, one type of cancer. There are still huge, gaping holes in our knowledge of treatment-related side effects. But for the first time, we have a major opportunity to change this. One of the main reasons being that only now are people like me, living to the age I am, in large enough numbers so we can actually be studied. But whose responsibility is it actually to do this research, to fund this research? And who should tell us what to look at? Do we look, for example, at side effects that affect quality of life or lifespan? And there are some health professionals, of course, already working on this, but their numbers are tiny if you consider the huge amount of survivors in the world. The core people that should, of course, be highly involved in telling us what to research are survivors themselves. But not everybody has a background in science or medicine like I do. So why aren't we talking to each other in a common language to create uh, solutions to these problems together? Well, one reason might be that survivors have not always felt able to speak out about their experiences. Survivors' guilt is when you've survived, but many others around you have not made it. And this can make it incredibly difficult to realize, to, it can make it incredibly difficult to complain about your experience, because at least you're alive. But this is changing. People are increasingly talking, via social media particularly. And we as researchers, doctors and scientists need to listen to these conversations and realize that survivors are not just data points on a graph, they're not just their medical samples and medical records. These are people we can have conversation with to help us, to help them. They are the people behind me. They are unique individuals which form a global community. And modern medicine needs to systematically change in order that, so that there are more researchers, more research projects, funding available for research, and specialists particularly to cater for cancer survivors. Because we as cancer survivors don't just want to survive cancer, we want long, happy, successful lives after treatment. And now really is the time to come together to do this work, not just to benefit survivors, but also all of those people who work so hard to enable people like me to live in the first place. Thank you very much.